I'm not, I'm not electrically inclined. I guess y'all know that about now. But uh, like I was saying, it's time for our deliverance, and a lot of things is going on. The spirit is moving, doing the things that it needs to do. And we have to keep up with the spirit and deal with the things that we need to deal with so that when the Messiah is shown the scene, he'll say, my servant, a job well done. And that's what we're looking for, for him to say, my servant, a job well done. And in order for us to do a good job, the only thing we have to do is read this book and put faith in our mind and step forward. And we're all going to stumble and fall and come short of his glory. But the thing of it is, is to get up and keep on doing your job because you don't know what's going to prosper, either this or that. Mm-hmm. But Brother Steve, read the authors of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he may come in and sup with us and mess with him, that we may continue to read out of this great legacy and consider what we read because Yahweh meant what he said. I'm going to read the articles of the church beginning at First Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sin. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as to the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yeshua HaMashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ephesians Chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, by whom you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim for the anointed one's sake have forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim as their children, and walk in love, as the anointed one also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be one's name among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Revelations chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sit with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says, Unto the church. Amen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church and hold a convention. I'd like to start our class today in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 and verse 17 through verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17 through verse 31. Verse 
verse 17. For the anointed one sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. not with wisdom or words, mm -hmm. least the cross of the anointed one should be made of non effect. Mm -hmm. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of Elohim. And when we listen to the doctrine that's coming out of the church, what they're talking about concerning the cross, we can see all that ain't nothing but a bunch of junk. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Mm -hmm. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not Elohim made foolish the wisdom of this world? Mm -hmm. For after that, in the wisdom of Elohim, the world by wisdom knew not Elohim. It pleased Elohim by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Mm -hmm. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Right, the Jews require a sign. Brother, come pray for me. You need to come pray for me. Brother, why don't you go over there and do this? You know, you got the spirit. Go do this and go do that. Right. It's a, for a sign. And if it don't happen in, in the nick of time that they give it, then you really will be a sign. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. But we preach the anointed one crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Mm. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, the anointed one, the power of Elohim, and the wisdom of Elohim. Praise God. Because the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men, and the weakness of Elohim is stronger than men. Mm. For you see your calling, brethren, how did not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called? But Elohim have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and Elohim have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are despised. Have Elohim chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. Amen. Now, when we consider what the Spirit has said in Holy Convention and compare your teachings to, uh, 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 to, the, to all the things the mingle nations of the earth have done in the name of politics and religion, we can plainly see the foolishness in their doctrine of the grace of the Master's death on the cross. Mm -hmm. Because politics brings debates, division, and wrath among men, and man's religions foster the same results. Mm. But go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 30. But of him are you in the anointed one, Yahshua, who of Elohim is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorious, let him glory in the other day. Now, Due to the wisdom of Yahweh that has been taught to the saints and how the use of each gift has waged war against the sword of the adversary from without and how the Spirit is gathering those called to hear what the Spirit says in the church due to our spiritual works through all of us, all of us great and small, the heavens rejoice as another soul walks through that door and is saved from the terror outside the camp, and the Holy Spirit is glorified in us for the works mm. that we do. But go ahead and read, brother. That was it, El. You finished that? Yes, sir. I thought I told you to go to chapter 2 and verse 17. Oh, okay. I thought it was 17. No, 216. 216. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse I did. One. I did say that, brother, but I'm sorry. Go to uh, chapter 216. Verses 1 through 16? Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Elohim. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahshua HaMashiach, and him crucified. That's why I never asked you about anything about script. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Mm -hmm. And my speech and my preaching was not with entire.
enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Right, being able to cut through that curse of blindness so you can see who you are, know your, uh, know your relationship with your God, and understand and begin to understand the things that are promised to you that's written in Scripture. And these are things that's been hidden from us from the foundation of the, well, been hidden of us since we've been here in this country, simply because the adversary of the devil don't want us to know anything. <laughs> because he knows that once Jake rises up, looseness and in trouble. This is why he does everything he, he can. He throws everything he can after us to keep us fighting among each other. Mm. As long as we fight among each other, we don't have no time to fight him, do we? Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to know. But we speak the wisdom of Elohim and a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which Elohim ordained before the world unto our glory, hmm. which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Adonai of glory. Mm -hmm. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim have prepared for them that love them. Mm -hmm. But Elohim have revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of Elohim. Well, none of us knew what Elohim was going to do. None of us knew what he was going to do, but he revealed those things to us on a daily basis simply because we have service and you got a job for us to do. Hmm. Well, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of Elohim know of no man but the spirit of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of Elohim, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of Elohim. Amen. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, mm -hmm. comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Amen. Spirit. Now, the works make manifest the children of the kingdom to come. Understand... Be warned and diligently careful of your station, you Hebrew Israelites, because if you understand these holy things of Elohim, regardless of the depth of your knowledge, surely if we invite the devil in among us in strivings concerning our likes or dislikes, uh, one's do's and don'ts or things you have no power to retain or change, we will not only have the sword from without to contend with, but being Yahweh's worshiping servants, being Yahweh's worshipers in the service of, of Yahshua, we began to do what? To bring terror and unrest in the body, which hinders the works and causes our prayers to be hindered. It threatens the security of our peace. And most of all, it shows that being Yahweh's servants with knowledge, uh, uh, this points to us as being the foolish people of Yahweh. Just like it was said in the first chapter, chips don't fall far from the tree. As our fathers resist the Holy Ghost, so do some of us. Mm -hmm. Yet the works will suffer and continue even though we are weak uh, 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 through fleshly things of the Spirit. And no weapon that's formed against us is going to prosper in that weakness. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and read, brother. Yeah, it's just personal things called prayer. That, that could be like precept. Precept, you know, when you find the word. Mm -hmm. And you can see what the Spirit is doing. You see, a lot of times we can put precept upon precept in the end of a knowledge, but that don't make you see what the Spirit does. And when you don't see what the Spirit does, brother, what happens is you become vain and puffed up in your imagination, and eventually your foolish heart will be darkened. You know, yes, these brothers and sisters who run off to these seminaries and seminars that, uh, and theologian school obviously have not read this because in these places they teach them man's wisdom and not the wisdom of God. Of the course, world. of course. They teach them the, they teach them the science yeah. of religion. Mm -hmm. There is no science in religion. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you, like I said, the Greeks seek out the wisdom. Science is part of their wisdom. Look at all of the private fraternities they got set up every place. 
and then you can very well see that uh, the Greeks were seeking after wisdom. We seek after the signs. See, all we want is the symbol. As far as the wisdom and understanding that came, as far as this thing being what, what it stands for, why it was brought about, we don't deal with that too much. What we deal with is, oh, I belong to this club in church, I mean, in, in, in school, right? You belong to this sorority, you're a cow, right? Yeah, somebody needs to cap you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead now. I mean, seriously. <laughs> seriously, I've seen brothers up on AU Center, young brothers, man, being laid down, down the street in the wintertime in jockey shorts with a leash around their neck, following some sister, he barking like a dog. Cute dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I told him, I said, I can't, I refuse to pay somebody to put my behind. <laughs> you know, it, you, uh, years ago when I was in school, they had to pay three and four hundred dollars to, to become part of these sorority and fraternity. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see the wisdom in that. Paying somebody to whip my behind? No. 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 Well, you know, it's a prestige thing in, uh, in school. You know, everybody want to know which sorority you belong to, you know, and so forth. Everybody wants to know that, but it's, it's, it's a prestige thing. Um, I always tell them if I'm going to join any club, it's going to be the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, you want to go to their meet. <laughs> go ahead. They'll make, they'll make shish kebabs at you, bro. They used to. I don't know. And things changed. Right now, 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 look how they got with uh, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> things are things are beginning to change a little bit. So I don't know, bro. But go ahead now, read, Steve. Verse fourteen. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Elohim, mm -hmm. for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And they always have a problem with spiritual things, you see. They, this, this is why I went through and dealt, dealt with those classes I dealt with about the law, to let, let you know that when folks come to you with, with some stuff, just, just say, okay, go on about your business. And you find out it ain't going to rest. And they ain't going to rest, brother, because people like digging up stuff. We don't like, we're kind of people, we don't, we talk about peace, but we don't too much do things that make for peace. And the peace is something that you have to really, really get down on your knees and search for. And you have to do everything that you can in order to retain that peace, because if you don't, the adversary is going to put his foot in your door. And once he gets his foot in the door, we're in big trouble. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who have known the mind of the Adonai, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of the anointed one. Uh, uh, but uh, and back here in, in verse uh, uh, 14 it says, But the natural man receive not the things of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. He had come to you with law about it, but that's because he hadn't discerned these things through the spirit. But he that is spiritual discerneth all things. Yet he himself is discerned of no man. For who hath known the mind of Yahweh, that he may instruct him that discerneth all things? But we have the mind of Christ. This is why we discern all things. Surely, having knowledge does not mean that one has the spirit. Therefore, when we allow ourselves to become complacent, the use of knowledge and having no abiding works in the body for edifying, People worship towards Yahweh's holy oracle, yet their works are like thereof towards edifying never adds anything positive to the, uh, that the saints can use in our task. And, the, and are these not the ways of the natural soul with knowledge, yet can't discern the spiritual reconciliation that's going on? While attending NCCI, you are being taught the seven mysteries of Elohim, uh, 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 of the gospel of truth, and have opportunity to be the voice of Yahshua in Metro Atlanta. Being constant, walking in the commands and judgments, being in holy convention uh, 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 to hear what the Spirit says in holy convention, being ever mindful of the reason you are, you are servants, being diligent in the Master's work in NCCI, these are the reasons the saints are being purged toward salvation. Look around you and consider what brought you here and receive instructions. Therefore, be diligent to be careful 
that you grieve not the spirit because then your understanding will be darkened. You will use your knowledge foolishly and the works which brought you here will be burned as the family suffered the loss of, of a soul. Mm. Yet for the works of Yahweh in our bodies and the works of Yahshua in the church, the loss is replaced and we receive more power to aid us in our charges according to our expectations of, uh, of Yahweh. Uh, Zechariah chapter 14, uh, ch chapter 12, and verse 1 through verse 14. Amen. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 1 through verse 14. I didn't think I was going to be here today, so I really didn't prepare. I asked for today, but I got out of there kind of early. Uh, Zechariah kind of 14, chapter 14 rather, and verse uh, Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 through 14? Yeah, Zechariah chapter 12. In verse 1 through verse 14. I, I, I always say 14, brother, because that's one of my favorite chapters in Zechariah. Yeah. Zechariah chapter 12, in verse 1 through verse 14. The burden of the word of Yahweh for Israel, says Yahweh, which stretches forth the heavens and left the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Yehuda and against Jerusalem. He's talking about the war of Armageddon, right? Go ahead, brother. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Mm -hmm. And that day, says Yahweh, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Yehuda and will smite every horse of the people with blind. So we know that once this new world order is uh, is, is formed we know from reading this what, what they're going to be about. They're going to be about destroying the house of Judah, right? Why? Because you're his battle axe, his weapon of war and you are his governors. That's why. Go ahead, brother. Verse Five, and the governors of Yehuda shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in Yahweh of hosts, their Elohim. And that day will I make the governors of Yehuda like an hurt of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheep, and they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Yahweh also shall save the tents of Yehuda first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Yehuda. Now, didn't Paul say in the second chapter of uh, Romans, uh, glory and honor to the Jew first and then to the Greeks? He said in tribulation and anguish to the Jew first and then to the uh, Gentiles, right? Well, if it's going to be that way, if, the, if Judah's going to receive the, uh, the, the first persecution, then Ju it should be Judah that received the first salvation in it. So this is why he say, uh, the Messiah said salvation is of the Jews. Go ahead, brother. So, so this captivity we mean and the scattering of all our tribes back in the ancient days is our uh, anguish in our... Uh, Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, the other tribes were scattered before we were simply because the Messiah had not been born yet. So the house of Judah, remember when he divided the tribes, he gave, uh, he gave Judah Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And the temple was in the city, so the Levites on all of the, 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 the suburbs around Jerusalem, right? So uh, 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 what, what, uh, what that did was that made them a part of the house of Judah. So baby, uh, Israel got scattered to the four corners of the earth, but it was Judah that got put in slavery simply because of our station with God. So uh, uh, when he's talking about uh, 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 the gathering and so forth, it's Judah that's got to be gathered first. See, this is why America's got to fall, and we got to get out of here and get into the wilderness. Glory and honor truly will be to the Jew first and then to the nations. Okay. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 7, Yahweh also shall save the tents of Yehuda first, that the glory of the house of David 
and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Yehudah. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, And that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as thy bee, and the house of thy bee shall be as Elohim, as the angel of Yahweh before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I'm sorry, the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourner for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Mm -hmm. In that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem as the morning of Hadad Ramon in the valley of Megiddo. And, all, and the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart and their wives apart, all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. And their wives apart, right? Now, surely this is the result of the war between the saints of the Holy Ghost and the children of Lucifer. Due to your upbringing, we are witnessing the reformation of the beasts of Revelation 13 live and in living color. Mm -hmm. This warns us to be uh, prepared spiritually to withstand an adversary who is prepared and seeking ways to destroy the saints. Why? Because our works in Yahshua highlight the saints to be the formidable revolutionaries in Lucifer's kingdom. Mm. This is why the, the government has the Hebrews classified as terrorists. Mm. Your light shines in the darkness, and whoso comes to the light shall receive light. Once again, Lucifer knows that the Spirit has used us to bring another prodigal child into the sheepfold. But let's see some of our rewards for dealing with you, for, for doing the things that we do. 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 1 through verse 58. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 1 through verse 15. Let's go and bust up this thing with these, these, these folks and they're stumbling all over. This, uh, the 600s. <laughs> this, this was brought on by the Midianites, uh, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, in the 600s. Uh, before that, there was no such thing as a rapture. And then the white folks come up with another little trick word to give us, and, they, and all that is spread through the churches like wildfire. But let's pick this up, and we're going to see if they're right uh, or not. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 1 through verse 58. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, mm -hmm. by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that the anointed one died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of, of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Hmm. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not me to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of Elohim. But by the grace of Elohim, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of Elohim, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. Mm -hmm. Now, if the anointed one be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is the anointed one not risen. And if the anointed one be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Mm -hmm. Yea, 
and we have found false witnesses of Elohim because we have testified of Elohim that he raised up the anointed one, whom he raised not up, if so be, that the dead rise not. Hmm. For if the dead rise not, then is not the anointed one raised. And if the anointed one be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Mm -hmm. Then they also which are fallen asleep in the anointed one are perished. If in this life only we have hope in the anointed one, we are of all men most miserable. Mm -hmm. But now is the anointed one risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. Right, he became the firstborn among many brethren. See, the nations think that all of this stuff is going to happen all at one time to them and then to us. And, well, what the nations say to, uh, today is that they're going off to heaven for seven years, and they're going to stay up there seven years. Then they're going to come back down here and, and reign with the Messiah for a thousand years, and then everybody going to the new heaven and new earth. It's not written in Scripture. That wouldn't be growing on it to the Jew first, would it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. Yahweh have to give man a chance, uh, 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 a justified chance to attain salvation. Just like when he put Adam and Eve in the garden. Adam and Eve had a justified chance to live forever, right? They choose to sin. So in the first resurrection, he's going to set peace in the world so that man would have a justified chance to attain eternal life for a thousand years. You see, with, with Lucifer in the bottomless pit and sin uh, not running rampant on the earth, you can very well see how man's mind uh, uh, will be changed to serve the true and living God. And, and, and to show you that, all we have to do is get back in the book of Revelation, Revelation 7th chapter, and we'll see that there was a great multitude of people of all nations, tongues, and languages that had washed their, blow, uh, their clothes in the blood of the Lamb. You see, but they aren't going to know what the whole deal is all about because they're only going to be taught for three and a half years. You see, but once they get in the kingdom, then it'll be a kingdom of priests that'll be walking around saying, don't turn to the left hand, don't turn to the right, straight ahead is the way. Then if a man continue, if a man just choose to go ahead and blatantly commit sin, then he's going to die. It's just that simple. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Amen. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Mm. But every man in his own order, the anointed one, the first fruits, afterwards they that are the anointed ones at his coming. Then come up the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Elohim, even the fathers when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. Amen. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he have put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Mm -hmm. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that Elohim may be all in all. Amen. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Mm. Why, are they, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Yahshua HaMashiach, our Adonai, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what does it advantage me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Hmm. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of Elohim. I speak this to your shame. Mm -hmm. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. Mm -hmm. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, mm -hmm. but by rain, that it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Mm -hmm. But Elohim giveth in a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of man, 
another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Mm -hmm. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Mm -hmm. There's one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Mm -hmm. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. That is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Now, Paul is not saying here that you're going to be one of them, uh, one of them stop and go uh, 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 spirits that uh, uh, that flash in and out of the earth. He's not talking about that. Mm -hmm. What he's talking about is uh, the body that's going to be resurrected from the dead. And guess what? You're looking at it. Mm -hmm. The Messiah says in Luke, also that spirit has not the flesh and blood, right? Right. So then we see that flesh and bones. Flesh and bones. Flesh and bones. You see him in uh, the new spirits will not have any blood in them, but they will be uh, flesh and bone. This is why when the Messiah appeared back to the apostles, he said, "Touch me, feel me inside myself." Spirits do not have flesh and bone as you see me have. He was a brand new creation, the firstborn among many brethren. The prophets had said, and the flesh shall inherit the earth forever. How can the flesh inherit the earth forever if it's going to uh, corrupt? Mm -hmm. So that flesh had to be quickened. And when the Messiah was quickened, he was the firstborn among many Hebrew Israelites. Glory and honor is to the Jew first and then to the nations. But go ahead and read, brother. Verse 45, and so it was written, the first man Adam was made a living spirit, living soul, I'm sorry. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Mm -hmm. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man of the earth, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Adonai from heaven. Amen. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Mm. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. O oh, death, where is your sting? Mm -hmm. O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yah, which giveth us the victory through our Adonai, Yahshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Adonai, for as much as you know that your labor is not vain in the Adonai. Okay, uh, we remember Job said that he, uh, he in his flesh he was going to uh, 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 see God, right? And we understand that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. But let's go into Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 37, 34 rather, in verse 1 through chapter 37 and verse 28. Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 1 through chapter 37 and verse 28. Let's go and take a look at this body. Hmm. The Messiah showed it to his apostles and then the prophets showed it to us. So you can make up your mind if this is what you want to deal with or not. You seek in chapter 34, because everybody got their own idea of what they want Yahweh to do for them. Folks want Yahweh to make them a spirit and bring them up there in heaven and sit on the Messiah's right hand and on his left hand. 
Right. See, they don't care about whether this has been given to somebody else. All they want to do is for is for themselves. Uh, 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 where did you go, brother? Ezekiel 34, and pick that up at verse 1. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Adonai Elohim unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Mm -hmm. You eat the fat, and you clothe you with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. Mm -hmm. The disease have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And you feed not the flock. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5. And they were scattered, because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field, when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains, and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Hmm. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. As I live, says Yahweh, says the Adonai Elohim, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became me to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O you shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, mm. and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Mm -hmm. But thou says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark days. Praise God. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the countries. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Adonai Elohim. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and I will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Amen. And as for you, O my flock, thus says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Mm. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pastures, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but you found the residue with your but you must found the residue with your feet. Mm. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have filed with your feet. Therefore, thus says the Adonai Elohim unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. <laughs> don't think you got the sheep here. The spirits use you to seek out that sheep, uh, that, that sheep, so that that sheep could hear what the spirit says in holy convention that it might be saved. Mm -hmm. But see, it was the spirit that guides and puts you in that sheep uh, on the same path, mm -hmm. so you can come together. You have nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is we have to understand that we are being led by the spirit to do the things that we uh, that we're supposed to do. And if we're led by the spirit, then the spirit. The Messiah said, I have my father on one. Mm -hmm. So that means that we have to be the same thing. Yeah, I don't know. You also see a machine from a voice. 
Yeah, I sure was telling you that my shit here my voice. That's right. You know, they explain the words. That's why we come to church. That's what you see. Yeah. We have the same spirit that, that, that created all things. Hmm. That's why the Messiah said, my sheep know me to hear my voice. Say it, God. Yes, sir. Uh, the passage is being read. Also, he's making a comparison to the fact of Israel being in the Babylonian content. He's pulling his sheep from the Babylonian influence of the lies of the sheep. He's basically referring to the church as it is now. And my sheep have been pulling by his false pastors. They're taking their money. They're promising the kingdom of heaven. They're not teaching them the truth. And he's going to pull his true called children out of the Babylonian influence and bring it to his team. And then with that, we have to take that and to go out there to teach the lost sheep that they're being deceived and fooled from the Babylonian Roman Empire influence, Sunday worship churches and things that, you know, to come back into the Judah, Israel, Sabbath people, the truth. Is that also how that could be interpreted? Well, it is, my brother, because uh, you're you exactly right when you said, I'm going to uh, search out my flocks. That's what he's doing. He's searching out his flocks now. When he's getting his flocks out of these old houses, they got like what they call churches. When he's going to the sanctuary, so that they can learn on what they have to do to attain salvation, because man don't know what he got to do. Man think all he got to do is. Lord, Lord, I love you, you love me, I pray that brother over there this week, I go to church every Sunday, I keep all the holidays and everything, and all these things, and all these things, Lord, I am a good Christian. The Christian's going to be here. <laughs> but when he said salvation is of the Jews, the people, people miss that. See? When they crucify it. When, when, uh, when you are asking, uh, first of all, first of all, you have your mic on? It's done. Where's our man? Oh, I'm doing your man. Okay. See, that's why when you get back in the prophets, the prophets tell you that it's a Jew going to set up his kingdom. And he's going to set it up in the land of the Jews. But see, man don't want these things. So when man said, no, he didn't mean none of that stuff he told them prophets. Y'all don't even need to read that stuff. Christ nailed all of that to the tree. If you never read it, you'll never know what salvation is all about. Because the New Testament is a confirmation of things that were said in the Old Testament. And if you don't know, you may get, at, uh, uh, like Paul may say, by grace you're saved through faith. Cut! You go in the Old Testament to show you what this grace is all about. The grace is the new covenant. And who was the new covenant made with? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. See, all these folks running around here talking about they're going to this church, they're going to that church, they this, they that. And I ask them, show me the covenant that was made with you. Yahweh is a covenant God. Like he said, I don't do anything till I tell my servants to prophets first. So that way you won't be expecting one thing and end up getting another. See? Make the thing plain. It's here. All you got to do is read it and understand. But when, they, when people go in here, what they try to do is this. They try to find fine thing that will show you that Yahweh wants you to prosper in this, in this captivity. And you all know we're the richest slaves on the earth, right? If he keep us like this, all of us going to be lost. Confusion. Confusion. It's plain and simple. Sure. Confusion. We live in a world of confusion. And the world is run by the same person that was given this earth to run in the beginning. He was in the garden. His name was Lucifer. You see? And he was told to bring forth the fruit, and he brought forth evil fruit. And that's what he decided he wanted to do. See? He decided that. See? And uh, that's why I told him in Isaiah, you was perfect until iniquity was found in you. Not in your creation, but in you yourself, because this is what you want to do. It's the same thing with us. We'll read something and don't have a good understanding about it. This is why I say knowledge puffed up. Uh, we'll read something and have a low level of understanding about it, and before you know it, we didn't got a mess all over the church about nothing. 
See, then we want to go, once we get this in our mind, what we want to do then, we want to play politics. We want to go around, hey, brother, you want to vote for me? You, you want to vote for me? <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do. Don't you, want, don't you want to get on my side? I thought it wasn't the one side in the church. See, this is why I te tell people all the time, I say, look, if you keep your conversation all right, you don't have to worry about these things. But if you let Satan come, if you let Satan put a foot in the door, you're going to have big problems. You're going to have some very big problems. I would you start to say that. Uh, the thing from three to about seven, it was talking about how they, you know, the disease and the bind it up and the confusion. That when you leave those Christian churches, they don't call your house and ask you why you leave. You know, they're not really concerned about why you leave. And they're like that. They, you know, they're saying family members. Speak to such and such and tell them to come on back, but they, they themselves won't come and try to find out why you left. Church don't care about you, The only thing the church care about is how much money you put in church. That's the only thing they care care about. That's why uh, uh, they keep records pertaining to them times. They don't keep records for IRS purposes. They keep records to know whether you're putting that money in there or not. Because if you ain't putting that money in church, you don't have to get up out of there. It's just that simple. You don't have to let somebody else have your seat. This is why I've always been so, so glad that Yahweh has always put us in a position to where the poor and the rich can have the gospel preached to them. Don't make no difference if you put a million dollars in church, then and incidentally we need some money. <laughs> uh, I think we found a place. And uh, I want to talk with you brothers about that. Uh, after church today, I'd like to talk with you, uh, with you deacons about this and see if uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, pursue this or not. We're going to take a look. And, uh, and ain't nothing pretty. Mm -hmm. But if we get some money, we'll make a mansion out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll make a place out of this worthy of being called the Congregation of Israel. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, anyways, uh, never mind, Steve. Go and read. I forgot where else going at. Right, go ahead and finish up, brother. Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 21. Because you have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, therefore will I save my flock and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahweh, will be their Elohim, and my servant David oppressed among them. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. See, this is what I like about my God. He tell you detail by detail just what's going to eat and leave nothing out. Nothing out. But when you get to talking about going to heaven, everything is left out. You don't read nothing. But we're going to meet the Lord in the air, folks, and we're going to heaven. Show it to me. Show me one thing you're going to do in heaven. We're going to walk down the streets of gold. I haven't read about no streets of gold being in heaven. I read about streets of gold being in the new city, Jerusalem. But that don't come that, that don't come to that after the uh, first resurrection and the first heaven and all that stuff is going to be done away with because it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Mm. Well, Elder, they don't understand that heaven is on earth, what he say until the day of your hand of Baptist, the kingdom of heaven was taken by force. Mm -hmm. but can you go up in the sky and take the kingdom from the most, from, from the earth? Right. They don't understand, you know, the different condition living, what you in heaven right now. That brother, man just wants something for nothing. See, that's what man, man wants to deal with things of the spirit. But see, when man, what man has been taught is that they're going to have some little man running around in them. Some little man going to come down on them and call them a little, a little invisible man and cause them to do this and cause them to do that. It doesn't work like that. The Messiah said, the words of spirit. Mm -hmm. See, let the, Paul said, let the words of God dwell richly within you because that's what you're going to receive. When you receive the spirit, you can believe one thing. You're going to either be receiving it to receive eternal life in the kingdom, or you're going to either wait till after that first resurrection and receive the spirit to be thrown out there in that lake of fire so you can burn out there forever. 
One thing I want to say is, remember um, Moses, when Moses said the prophet to Israel, he said, if you don't take heed to the commands, you obviously will make your, your earth, your heaven is iron, and your earth is brass. And mm-hmm. we see right there, that it's about a condition, right? You know, clear that. Sure. Sure, because the church don't do nothing. God say, man, the church been fighting wars all over the earth ever since it became a church. Mm. Uh, go ahead and read. Uh, as a matter of fact, right over there in the Middle East now, you see what's happening, don't you? They're on the crusade. And George Bush said they was on the crusade. That's when them Arabs start saying, yeah, we on the jihad. <laughs> we know what it's all about. It's all about power and control. You're not, these Gentiles want to control everything, and they write on the, on the doorsteps of it, and eventually they will control everything. You know why? My God gave it to them. Mm. But why did he give them to them? So Satan can get his, and Yahweh can get his, and he can destroy them. That's why he gave it to them. See, he's going to make them come up and do what he say do. See, go ahead. This man don't mean to do all of this damage he's doing on the earth, but see, his father, the devil, is allowing him to do just what he wants to, and Yahweh is sitting back and just saying, don't touch my anointing. See, go ahead and read, Steve. Verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruits, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am Yahweh, when I have broken the bands of their yoke, and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. Mm-hmm. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them. But they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. Amen. And I will raise up for them a plan of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither by the shame of the heathen anymore. So we talk about people eating food in the land, right? So we know that everybody, when the Messiah come back, everybody that's going to be saved is not going to receive those new bodies. It's going to be some flesh and blood people walking around in the land. It's going to be having babies. Mm-hmm. And people are going to be dying. The scripture told us a child would die 100 years old, didn't it? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, because longevity is going to be the signs of the time. If you're 100 years old and you died, you were number to me. So when you look at the Christians that's talking about this rapture thing, they just going to miss the rule of the, the anointed one. I mean, right? They don't want the anointed one to reign. They're going to fall under him when he's coming down. Right. They don't want him to reign on earth because he reign on earth. He, on earth he is king of the Jews. Mm-hmm. They don't want that. They want him to be king of the Christians. Mm-hmm. Lucifer is king of the Christians. <laughs> <laughs> they just start, and what, what did they call him all this time? Jesus. Wouldn't it be also be a lie of Lucifer to get all the people that go to this false church to believe that they're not going to have to suffer any tribu- tribulation? They can continue living in life rich and wealthy and powerful. They can continue doing everything they want, but they're being taught by the Babylonian Empire to have no fear of disrespecting the word. It's all a carnal lie to think that I can continue doing all that I don't have to face the wrath of Yahoo. Once he becomes say say the side in the name of Jesus or oh, you you've been put off to the side so he's got to believe the people that are gonna be raptured up and not have to face the tribulation and not gonna have to face the wrath of Yahoo. Correct. Correct. But they do the wrath when he turns on the earth but they're not only gonna to have to uh, uh, face the wrath uh, of Yahshua, they're going to have to face the wrath of Yahweh before Yahshua comes. By the time Yahshua comes, people are going to be saying, Blessed is he that comes in. People, people hear themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains say, Fall on us. <laughs> See? Right. 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 Protect us from the wrath of the Lamb. Not understanding that that's Satan coming down to throw his wrath out on folks. But that's what they're going to say simply because they've been deceived. And man. A man is going to keep man to see. Except Yahweh left us a small remnant, we'd be like Sodom and Gomorrah. So we should consider these things. Yahweh didn't owe us anything, but it had to be a reason why he brought you to the shepherd's tent. And we need to consider those things when you come in that door there. Uh, go ahead and read, brother. Verse 30. Thus shall they know that I, Yahweh, their Elohim, am with them, and that they... 
people in the house of Israel are my people, says the Adonai Elohim. Who's his people in the house of Israel? The house of Israel. That's why Israel wrote the whole book. I'm going to read, bro. Verse 31. And you, my flock, the flock of my pastor, are men, and I am your Elohim, says the Adonai Elohim. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against Set Israel. your face against them folks over there in Israel that's calling themselves the Jews, right? Mount Seir, right? And prophesy against it. Go ahead, brother. And say unto it, Thus says the Adonai Elohim. Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against you, and I will stretch out my hand against you, and I will make you most desolate. And I will lay your cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. All the cities have already been laid waste. That's why he's in our city. His, city, his land was underneath our land. They called it the Negev, the South land. And according to the prophets, that's where the beast and the false prophet is going to be. When the Messiah comes, they're going to put the, the lake of fire is going to be started in Esau's land. Esau ain't going to need no land. What are they going to need land for? He's going into captivity under us, and then his whole seed is going to be destroyed. Go ahead. Because of his violence against his brother Jacob. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. I will lay thy city's waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Because thou have had a perpetual hatred, and have shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, therefore, as I live, says the Adonai Elohim, I will prepare you unto blood, and blood shall pursue you. Since you have not hated blood, even blood shall pursue you. It said, because you have had a, verse 5, because you have had a perpetual hatred and have shed the blood of the children of Israel by force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, right? Mm -hmm. That their iniquity, listen to what it's saying, that they, uh, their iniquity had an end, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When the Messiah came, didn't the iniquity have an end? Didn't, didn't Herod sent out and have all of our children killed off from two years old and down when trying to kill this brother? Okay. Go on and read, brother. That's what it's playing in line constantly. They'll never get no peace of it. He told them the land walking generation to generation. Ever, ever since, ever, ever, he told them as long as he was in that land, he was going to have war from generation to generation. And they went in there fighting, and they've been fighting ever since. They've never had one day of peace since they've been in that land. Mm -hmm. yeah. Elder, wouldn't this also be uh, during the time of 70 AD when we were killed by the sword, and, and that was the kind of the final blow for our people? Have it in sure, you, 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 can apply that. you can apply that also, but our iniquity didn't have an end in 780. We still had iniquity. Our iniquity had an end when, well, our iniquity had an end when the Messiah came. That's when the iniquity had an end. But you're right, in between 70 and 100 AD, that's when we were cast out of the land. For what? Because we were still committing iniquity. Go ahead and read, Steve. Yes, sir. Verse 7. Thus will I make Mount Sierra most desolate, and cut off from it him that passes out, and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men, in thy hills, and in thy valleys, and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make you perpetual desolations, and your city shall not return, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. And when you look down in the Gab now, you won't find no cities in the Gab. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. Because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas Yahweh was there. Therefore, as I live, says the Adonai Elohim, I will even do according to your anger and according to your envy, which you have used out of your hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them when I have judged you. Mm -hmm. hmm. And you shall know that I am Yahweh, and that I have heard all your blasphemies, which you have spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. Mm -hmm. Thus with your mouth you have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. 
I have heard them. Hmm. Thus says the Adonai Elohim, when the whole earth rejoices, I will make you that. Every, at once everything is settled on the earth, I'm going to send my son, settled on, settled on the earth, and the, the kingdom is set up and everything, and people are living in peace and prosperity, I'm going to kill you off. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. And we had this sister with uh, that, uh, what's his name, uh, Armstrong, mm -hmm. Worldwide Church of God. You know, she came in, an older lady. Mm -hmm. She said uh, God wasn't going to kill anybody. Hmm. God wasn't going to cast anybody on. I heard one of them preaching. I heard one of them preaching women say the same thing. God is love. He's not going to kill anybody. So, lady, you ain't never read your book. <laughs> Do you know the young is trapped for God? I mean, look what he did. They told Noah that too. Right, I said the earth was standing in and out of the water. I mean, he hung the earth on nothing. And then he brought the flood back up on the land and killed off everybody but eight people. He's a terrible God. If you don't think so, go look at the history of what happened to the children of Israel and everybody put their hands on them. Yahweh's been having this death angel killing off the folks on this earth from the Garden of Eden. And folks talking about, God is love. Right. He loves you if, you if you do what he say do. But if you don't do what he say do, you're going to have some serious problems. And then he's going to show you that he loves you again if you repent from what you've been doing. But if you keep on doing it, then you know it's going to happen. Yes, I have a reading Luke, my new chapter, when he actually shows that those my enemies that will not have me to rule over them, bring them here and see them. Sweet, we're for me. Well, that's right in the New Testament. Sure, sure. Like I keep telling folks, y'all keep talking to y'all sweet Jesus. When Yahshua come, the slain of the Lord is going to be from one end of the earth to the other. You can believe that. Yeah. Uh, they're going to kill off so many men in, 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 in that valley down there, in the valley of Armageddon. They're going to kill off so many men that the blood is going to come run down the mountains. It's going to come out those corpses and everything up to the horses' bridles for a space of 20 miles. They folks talking about That's what it is. A whole lake of blood. But see, it takes blood, human blood, to cover human sin. I consider all the sin, that, the sin that's been all up on the earth, and you can see why all the blood is being shed. Yeah. That's why it said, who's he that coming from Baltimore? Uh, he didn't think the garment did some blood that's speaking with Messiah. Yeah. yeah. Coming through the region. He just coming by watching our mighty say, yeah, that was, yeah. Going to read, brother. Verse 15. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Edomia, even all of it. And they shall know that I am Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 1. Also, thou son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel, and say, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says the Adonai Elohim, because the enemy have said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus says the Adonai Elohim, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and you are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people, Therefore, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Adonai Elohim. Thus says the Adonai Elohim to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus says the Adonai Elohim. Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Edomia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with this spiteful mass to cast it out for a prey. So let's not just deal with Esau then. Ain't the Muslims got the dome of the rock sitting up uh, uh, up there talking about this on the Temple Mount? Well, he got something against them too, ain't he? Ain't he? I'm going to see how they're going to get up out of this one. See, I'm going to see if walk around blowing himself up and going to get him out of this one. <laughs> yeah, brother, I even saw where... Uh, Yes, the Arafat's people got it in for him now. Of course. They found out how he'd been skimming all that money. He got billions and billions. I saw a documentary on it. 
and man, those uh, I don't know, he, uh, those Palestinians may get him for Esau. Brother, I don't know who gonna get Yasser, but I tell you one thing: all the kings of the earth has always siphoned off money. Uh, for a nest egg of their own. And, and the, the money that Yasser Arafat got, he just like Saddam Hussein, he'll never be able to spend it all. Right. He can't even give it all away. See. But like I was saying, all of the people that has been into the land of Israel and had done anything in the land of Israel, they gonna be, uh, Yahweh is going to require it of it. He's going to require it of the Muslims because they were the first ones to come in there. They weren't Muslims then. But they were the first one to come in there in 606 B.C., right? Mm -hmm. Now niggas walk around here talking about Assalamu Alaikum. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Go ahead, read, bro. Hey, Alfred is hey, hey, bro. That's one ugly thing. I'm telling you, too. He can scare us on his little away from here. Brother, me and you getting old, you better stop talking. Go ahead, read, bro. First thing you Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because you have borne the shame of the heathen. Hmm. Therefore, thus says the Adonai Elohim, I have lifted up mine hand, surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. Praise God. But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. Praise God. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be till and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be builded. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your own estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. Praise Yah. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess you, and you shall be their inheritance, and you shall no more be henceforth bereave them of men. Thus says the Adam Elohim, because they say unto you, You land devour the men, and have bereaved your nations. Therefore you shall devour men no more, neither bereave your nations any more, says the Adonai Elohim. Neither will I cause men to hear in you the shame of the heathen any more, neither shall you bear the reproach of the people any more, neither shall you cause your nations to fall any more, says the Adonai Elohim. Hmm. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Mm. Wherefore I poured my fear upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for the idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of Israel, and are gone forth out of his land. Mm -hmm. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Adonai Elohim, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, mm -hmm. but for my holy name's sake which you have profaned among the heathen, whether you went. Our folks made their self so dirty that y'all wish, I don't do this for your sake. He kicked us out the land, tore down the temple, just got to cause our holy name to cease among men and put us on the bottom of the pile. He said, I'm going to raise you up not because of your evil ways, because you see what they got you, see. But for my holy name's sake that you polluted among the heathen. That's why I'm going to do it. Scriptures is talking about the number one command. Thou shalt not have no other gods but me. Mm -hmm. Israel was worshiping Baal, Babylon, the sun, the moon, the stars, and their graven images, and they had been deformed, defied. That's why they call them a whore heathen to worshiping a false god. And he's making it known by clear that I'm going to come forth and sin against me. You're going to be punished for this. But a few of you are going to 
I'm telling you, even though I've killed you, I've smitten you, that I'm going to accept you back, and then you'll be more in honor of who I am because you've been saw what the consequences of a false god is. I you went out there to see, as we're talking about the church today, mm -hmm. and he's calling these people to come back. And he's going to be merciful on them, and he's going to return the land to them. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? He's going, every man is going back to his own land, and every man is going to go back to his own people. Everybody will live in their own nation. Yahweh has always preserved the remnant. What I say is a virgin, you know, the virgin pure. The pure. Right. Once we get back into the land, pure worship will not be set in place until uh, the Messiah has reigned just about a thousand years. Pure worship will be in place, but man will still be off into his junk. Hmm. This is why the Messiah is given a, a whole thousand years, a sabbatical uh, uh, years, to bring this thing about. Because, like I said before, man has to be taught how to serve and worship the true and living God, how to live among his fellow man, because man don't know. Man has been told by, by the adversary, the devil, that uh, uh, you, live a you live in a democracy. Mm. And you have the right to choose. <laughs> See, the what's the difference between democracy and Christianity? Mm -hmm. One's political head of it, and the other is the ecclesiastical head of it. They tell me that, you know, it's a separation between church and state. You need to go as far as taking the Ten Commandments out of the courthouse and find the judge. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a symbol to show that Satan has power over the law. It was a symbol to show that you don't have to obey the law. I'm in run this, and if you do, you're going to be thrown out, cast out. Or the school. Well, he worship Satan anyways. Okay. He worship Satan anyways, so that was, you know, that, that's neither here nor the there. But he worships Satan anyways. You know why? He's a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't read that. Thank you. And I bet you, I bet you, Thanksgiving, I bet you have big old turkey on the table, ham or something. <laughs> Christmas, New Year's, all them days, I bet you he had a big old ham or turkey or something on the table. You know why? He worshiped the adversary of the devil. You know what a lot of us are going to do? A lot of us, watch. Just watch. A lot of us is going to go and eat food to sacrifice to idols. Watch. Just watch. Just watch. We're going to go, and they're going to tell us, oh, I know you don't eat none of them abominations. I got this nice big couple on the table just for you. All of my vegetables and everything that I done cook, I got that 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 gobbler in there. You don't have to worry about it. come on and eat. But wait a minute, this is sacrifice to the devil. Now why did you want me to come to eat? And you know I don't be, be a partaker of this thing. Oh, I thought you were oh that's right, you ain't a good Christian, right? <laughs> I always ask like my brother and my sister, I say, What is <laughs> Well, why would you give thanks in a country where you are captive? Mm. That's what I want to know about that Thanksgiving thing. What thanks is that? I mean, who are you giving thanks to? Well, folks, our, our people just don't know. A lot of our people just don't know, brother, that America is not the only con country to celebrate Thanksgiving. Yeah, the Thanksgiving. Europeans were celebrating before the pyramids came over here, Of right? course. It's, uh, it's, uh, we think it's an American holiday, but it's not. It was set up by them, by them same Europeans that came over here and murdered off them. Them was good Christians, too. Y'all know that. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say this, too. They had already then told you that holiday, the distance between a holy day and holy day, because holy had used some research in the East Indian fertility gods. So they got there then telling us if you're reading the differences. We got the holy days. The holiday is... is with the fertility god from India. Mm -hmm. They had fun and frolic, and then there was Holly. Mm -hmm. So that's why all them days. Yeah. It's worse than what we're saying. Yeah, all them things really. They know it's Holly's day. Sure. There's fun, you know, and nothing's worse. Sure. That's why uh, make most, of your, all, most of your major Christian holidays, when they can, they make them fall on a Sunday. Especially when they're dealing with the resurrection of the Messiah. They got to always make it fall on a Sunday. Don't care what day of the week it is. Of what money it is, just so it come on Sunday. Do they doing the same thing Esau do? See, we thinking at it, but look here, here it is. See, we doing this. We the Jews. We keep we keeping their atonement. <laughs>
Because they worship, they worship uh, the angel of the sun. No marvel, because Satan has been transformed into an angel of light, and his ministers are teaching the Messiah in contention. In Islam, they say, well, he was nothing but a, a, a Palestinian, another Palestinian prophet. You see, in Christianity, what did they say? Oh, Jesus was the son of God. Right. Go to read, brother. Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, says the Adonai Elohim, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen, from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Well, we know that the pe anybody in Israel today is in there illegally, mm -hmm. because Israel cannot return to the land until the, not in peace and, and tranquility until the Messiah returns. Mm -hmm. What's the sense of going to Israel and you can't own none of the land? Mm -hmm. Go on to read, brother. You go to Israel and they ask you, say, who's the prime minister? Mm -hmm. Sharon. On me, right? Right. Who set up all that stuff that you got? The Israelis. <laughs> Go to read. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. You see what he says he's going to do? I'm going to, you read the land of baptism, right? Uh -oh. He said, I'm going to bring you in your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean for all your filth and descent from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put in you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So that heart of flesh is going to make you adhere to the laws of God, right? Of course. See, that's why when folks get up in their stuff, man, whatever they're doing, that's between them and their creator. As long as you don't bring that junk in here, I ain't going to say nothing to you about it. You know why? It's not my business. Okay. Go on and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 28. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. And he said all the other nations, his people, of course, he's going to save them, so they're going to be called his people. But he's talking to Israel. Israel, you're going to be my people. You are, you are always my people. You were in the works before the foundation of the world mm. to be my people. Mm. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 29. I will also save you from all your uncleannesses, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that you shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall you remember your own evil ways. You listen to what he's saying. See? Folks like to jump up and folks stuff about what they're doing. See? See? I tell folks, man, leave folks alone. Let Yahweh take care of his business. See? He's going to do what he needs to do. He says... Uh, verse 31, then shall you remember your own ways, evil, evil ways. ways, and your doings that were not good, and shall load yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. You see, we don't have to do that. Only thing we got to do is do what we're supposed to do. Let Yahweh take care of his business. This is what our, a lot of our problem is. We don't know where to draw the line between our things and the things of the Spirit. We don't know when to stop. Go to read, bro. Verse 32. Not for your sakes do I this, says the Adonai Elohim. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. So don't glory because I'm not doing this for your sake. I'm doing this for my holy name's sake. Because y'all just like the heathens. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 33. Thus says the Adonai Elohim, In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the wastes shall be built. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the garden of Edom. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced, 
and are inhabited. Hmm. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, Yahweh, built the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, Yahweh, have spoken it, and I will do it. Amen. Thus says the Adonai Elohim, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solar feast, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am Yahweh. The hand of Yahweh was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Adonai Elohim, thou knowest. Hmm. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O you dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Hmm. Thus says the Adonai Elohim unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. Now, he said, verse 6, uh, 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 verse 5, it says, Thus said the Adonai Elohim unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Why? Because of the breath that was put in you. Ain't that what happened with Adam? Adam? Yahweh breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and man became a living soul. And man ain't going to tell me where he breathed the spirit in him. I ain't never seen him breathe no spirit in nobody. I've seen the spirit come into somebody, but I ain't never seen him read where he breathed. He breathed the breath of life, and he already told him, say, I'm going to put my spirit in you, you're going to live, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. I'm going to breathe upon you, and you're going to live, right? Mm -hmm. And I will lay muscles upon you, and will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put what? Breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I'm Yahweh. Go to Reva. Verse 7. Y'all ought to hear some of them Baptist preachers preach this tribe. Oh, yes. <laughs> show out, don't you, brother? Just show totally out. When you get through, folks say, yeah, child, he showed the man. He just murdered uh, uh, dry bones in the valley. I said, right. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. He murdered them. <laughs> He sings that all the way through, and they never miss it. And never, never miss nothing. And never know what, and never, <laughs> never get nothing out of but a good flow show. Mm -hmm. I was a fighting man. I don't even read it. <laughs> yes, sir. Verse 7. You got to be a clown in the Christian church today, bro. You got to be a good actor in the church today. Yeah, T.D. Jakes, he one of them. Oh, yeah, brother. You, did you see him when he cast that unclean spirit out of that woman on, on, on stage? I didn't see that. Man, you should have saw that, Jack. <laughs> yeah, you missed a good one. <laughs> had that sister out there laying all down on the floor in that purple robe, Jack. Had a rope wrapped around and a chain wrapped around. He that brother got back and got to speaking in that junk. He be talking that 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 that, that, that sacred tongue. <laughs> that sacred tongue. He was talking in tongue and then come on out of it. Come on out of it. Come on out of it. Speaking in that tongue. Then he went up to her and unwrapped the chain. Then he went out and walked all across the floor and dropped buckets of sweat all over the floor everywhere. Then he came back and he took the rope from around her. And when he got it around, he said, Woman, thou art loose. <laughs> oh, man. She stood up. The address, man. I'm you. I say, look at this nigga. He gonna get, he gonna get over $200,000 for that. Huh? I'm going to make $200,000 in 30 years. <laughs> that's in, that's in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. He's uh, prophesied. Sure. Sure, he's a good prophet. A good false prophet, just like all the rest of them are. Go ahead and read, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his body. Right. Wherever that bone was in that valley, it came back and found its body and came to its body, didn't it? See, the Messiah, he said, touch me. Feel me. It's our Messiah. Spirits don't have flesh and blood, as you see. Go ahead. Go ahead, read from First. Flesh and bone. Go ahead. Eight. 
And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Adam Elohim, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Mm -hmm. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. What was missing? Blood. Blood is the soul of a man. The blood is the life of a man, right? Now you got the spirit. You don't need that blood. Go on and read, brother. Verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Right, these bones are not all the nations on the earth like they claim to be. These bones are the whole house of Israel. Right. Salvation is of the Jews. Israel is the Jews. Hmm. Go on to read, brother. Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We'll cut off our power. We'll cut off everything. We'll cut off from our God, our land. We haven't had any king, any princes, no holy things of our own. We cut off from everything. Go ahead and read, So brother. we have also this, besides being the physical, this is the physical and uh, mental resurrection of the children of Israel, right? Of course it is. It's the resurrection of the children of Israel that's all over the world. It's going to hear the word, and it's the, it's the new body that's going to be given. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Brother. Verse 12. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Adam the Elohim, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. No way, you all need to take this in church and read it to the preacher when he gets to talk about going to heaven. He said, I'm going to open your graves and I'm going to bring you back to the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. See? But couldn't that also mean... The wages of sin is death, and death being associated with the grave, and it's also it's terrible speaking that I'm going to bring forth the truth of knowledge to you to bring you out of sin and into the life of righteousness. That's why I said it was too precious a thing. It's just like the prophet Daniel's many of the prophecies things that's attached to one prophet. But I tell you this: if a brother died ten years ago, you go out there and dig up his grave, what you gonna find? What do you say you gonna do to them bones? I'm gonna bring muscles upon them bones. I'm gonna cause flesh to come upon them bones, and I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna breathe in you the breath of life in your nostrils, and you gonna stand upon my, your feet, and I'm gonna put my spirit in you. You gonna live there? That's why Christ said, "This is what I was telling you about. See, this is what, this, this is what I was telling you about. This is the new body. This is why they tell you he was the first born among many brothers." They left the house of Israel. Right, right. That's why, why do you think this, the scripture tells us a child will die being 100 years old? See, natural man don't be living that long no more. Okay. Don't read, brother. Verse 13. And you shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live. You shall live, right? You was dead, now you're going to live, right? And I shall place you in your own land, then shall you know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take you one stick, and write upon it, for Yehuda and for the children of Israel his companions, then take another stick and write upon it, for yourself the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions, and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in your hand. And the Messiah will reign over them forever in Mount Zion, won't he? Huh? He's going to sit on the throne of David. David is going to be the prince of the kingdom. Judah is going to be scattered to the four corners of the earth to govern the land, and the children of Israel is going to reign from that land, and all the nations are going to come up from year to year to keep the Feast of Tabernacles and all the other feasts to do what? Bring that GNP up to Jerusalem. That's what it's for. 
That's why someone make the place of my foot grow. If you think he's going to wiggle his nose and do it, uh, it's going to come from the people. It's going to be a natural kingdom, right? Of course it's going to be a natural people kingdom. Still of course it's going to be money, dying. Spending money, right. driving cars, having babies. Right. Of course it's going to be dying. Okay. Go ahead and read. It right. also says, even when a man prophesied, won't be no need to prophesy. And it said his mother and his father, father that beside him, going to rip him off. Right. Prophesy, right. Tell him a lie. The Lord is all in Jesus. Right. Go on and read, brother. Verse 18. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 18. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will you not show us what you mean by these? Say unto them, Thus says the Adam and Elohim, Behold, I will take the stick of yourself, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Yehuda, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. Mm -hmm. And the sticks where on thy right of shall be in your hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their Elohim. And I be, my servant shall be a king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Yaakov, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant, I be, shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. In other words, you're going to have to come into my city to go to church, ain't you? Ain't you? Okay. Go ahead, bro. Hmm. Verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Verse 27, my tabernacle also shall be with them, yea, I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. So the sanctuary is going to be in the midst of it, because the sanctuary sits on top of the hill, right? And the tabernacle, which is the temple, the whole temple is going to be in the midst of who? The children of Israel. Go ahead and read, brother. And with all the children of Israel in the land... How many Gentiles do you think are going to be able to get into the sanctuary? They're going to have to be like that little dog in the picture they showed. They're going to have to be on down there getting them crumbs like they're supposed to be. Stand outside the gate. Mm -hmm. well, See, they, they got the gate of the strangers. They got, they got the gate of the strangers, right? Well, any place outside of that gate of the uh, strangers, they're around that whole deal. They're okay. Bro, with the men of Israel, brother, when you get to talking about how big do you think Tim going to be? How big do we think the sanctuary is going to be, brother? Everybody ain't going to be in that sanctuary. You know who's going to be in that sanctuary with the Messiah? That 144,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's who's going to be in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And the sons of Zodah. That's who's going to be in the sanctuary. The men of Israel, when they come in, they will be coming in crisscross. Going in one end, come out the other end. Yes, Elder. Remember, read about the Ezekiel 24 when you see the flock, our small flock on the flock of men. So we're not even fast to what they can do. Right. So we, yeah. flock of men. Right, I know that, bro. I know that. You know, we've been taught we're going to be spirits, and this keeps saying men and flesh and everything, so I don't know where they're getting their doctrine from. We're going to read, Steve. Last verse 28. Yeah. Question. That's verse 28. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahweh, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them, 
forever. Amen. That Israel is the one that's going to be sanctified. With regards to all the folks on 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 earth that's walking around here talking about how much they love the Creator and so forth, who's going to be sanctified? The house of Israel. Uh, Jeremiah chapter twenty. Jeremiah chapter twenty and verse one. I mean, I'm sorry. Jeremiah chapter thirty and verse one through chapter thirty-one and verse forty. He's talking about the resurrection, right? You said y'all shall not sleep, but some shall wake up to um, have a lot of sleep. Yes, last night. So he's talking about the resurrection long Right. And folks, and the, folks, and the rest of the folks is going to sleep till after this morning. Then they're going to wake up to what? Destruction. Thirty. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30. And pick that up at verse 1, my brother. Yes, sir. The word that came to Yahweh from Yahweh saying, Thus speak of Yahweh Elohim of Israel, saying, Write you all the words that I have spoken unto you in a book. For lo, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Yehuda, says Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Amen. And these are the words that Yahweh spake concerning Israel and concerning Yehuda. For thus says Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask you now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Hmm. Alas, but that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Yaakov's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. And why the time of Yaakov's trouble? Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why. All these nations is getting together and to destroy the children of, of Israel after Satan. This is when Satan gets thrown out of heaven. This is when Jacob is going to receive all the trouble he needs. Because Satan knows one thing. He got a short time to destroy us. And Yahweh has already got most of, a lot of us in the place of safety. And Satan knows that he got a short time. So this is when Jacob is really going to start turning to the Creator because of the pressure that's going to come on. Because he's going to turn to the right hand, he ain't going to have no friends. He's going to turn to the left hand, he ain't going to have no friends. And they're going to look up and curse their God and their king and ask Yahweh for some help. Go on and read, brother. Yahu, chapter 30, verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Praise Yah. But they shall serve Yahweh their Elohim, and that be their king whom I will raise up unto them. Mm -hmm. Therefore fear you not, O my servant Yahweh, says Yahweh, Neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save you from afar, and you'll see from the land of their captivity, and Yaakov shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Praise Yah. For I am with you, says Yahweh, to save you. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered you, yet will I not make a full end of you. I <coughs> correct you in measure, and will not leave you altogether unpunished. Hmm. But thou says Yahweh, thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead your cause, that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. They seek you not, for I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquity, because your sins were increased. Why cry thou for thine affliction? Your sorrow is incurable for the multitude of your iniquity. Because your sins were increased, I have done these things unto you. Therefore all they that devour you shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that pray upon thee will I give for a prey. Well, all the nations have had their hand on us at one time or another. So that's why he, now we can understand why he say he's going to gather all nations against Jerusalem. Because he told us, whosoever touched you, touched the apple of my eye, I will recompense it to you. 
He told the people in America, "Say, I gave my inheritance to you, my people in your hand, and upon the ancient you have very heavily laid the yoke. You didn't show them no mercy. Mm. Now we walk around and think we know something. The fathers of these Europeans didn't tell their children what had actually happened, right? A whole lot of folks don't they've know. Forgotten their, they've forgotten their way here in America. A whole lot of folks don't know. A whole lot of nations don't It's been a long time. Right. A whole lot of nations don't know what's going on, brother. You know why? It's to the Jew first. This is why you are getting everything that you need now. So when the nation start, that great multitude start to turn, it, they will have somebody there to teach them what the Yahweh had to say. Yeah. Basically, what I'm saying, the governmental system, or these slave traders, whoever they were, they, they, this thing about the children of God has gotten lost because they didn't relay it down. Because they told them we was Africans. Right. Okay. That's what took care of that. They told us we was African, and they figured all black folks is African. All white folks ain't Gentiles. Mm, right. Okay. Mm, mm. Don't read. Yes, sir. <coughs> Yahoo chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore help unto you, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, says Yahweh, because they call you an outcast, saying, This is Zion. Whom no man Right, don't nobody want to live around these folks. These folks are lawless. They self will. They ain't about nothing. Everybody come over here doing something for themselves for them. They too busy fussing at each other. Go ahead and read, bro. Verse 18. Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And all of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Hmm. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engages his heart to approach unto me, says Yahweh? So it sounds like to me that he's setting up a governmental system. He's talking about kings, talking about prince, talking about the governors of Judah. Mm -hmm. Talking about the establishment of Israel and the whole state and everything. So he's talking about setting up a governmental system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't see anybody reading this governmental system here, but he's saying, I think they say that they want to. I ain't seen a Hamlet, a Shimon, a Gentile. You see, I ain't seen nobody in here to be sure. Uh, you have to see there now. Right. You were all the right. Everybody's here for us, right? It's our turn. It's our turn. Yeah, yeah. So, so far, hey, Elder, what we've been, we've been reading is not anything that pertains to religion. We've been reading about God's love for this so-called Negro. We've been reading, we've been reading the new covenant. Show me the covenant. Show me the covenant that was made outside of the house of Israel. And I'll eat the book. Mm. Verse 22. And you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it, and until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days you shall consider it. Hmm, that's what we're doing. We're sitting down considering the things that's going to take place. We're living in the latter days, aren't we? Mm -hmm. When the last days come, there won't be no time to consider if you haven't gotten it in the latter days, you can give it up. Go ahead and read, brother. Yahoo, chapter 31, verse 1. At the same time, says Yahweh, will I be the Elohim of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says Yahweh, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause them to rest. Yahweh have appeared of all unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Hmm. Again, I will build thee, and you shall be built, O virgin of Israel. 
You shall again be adorned with your tabards, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto Yahweh our Elohim. Right. No more having your calves and everything uh, uh, set up between Dan and Beersheba. No more divided into two nations. No more going to uh, high places in all the land. All the, na all, all the children of Israel is going to say, What? Let's go up to Zion. Mm. That's where the temple is going to be at. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 7. But thou says Yahweh, sing with gladness for Yaakov, and shout among the chief of the nations, publish you, praise you, and say, O Yahweh, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and whip them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travail of whip child together. A great company shall return thither. Hmm. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahweh, O you nations, and declare it in the isles of all, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. But Yahweh hath redeemed Yaakov, and ransom him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of Yahweh for wheat and for wine and for oil, and for the young of the flocks and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrows. And I will saturate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children, because they were not. Hmm. Thus says Yahweh, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded, says Yahweh, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. Hmm. And there is hope in your ears, says Yahweh, that your children shall come again to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus, Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned. For you are Yahweh, my Elohim. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim, my dear son, is he a pleasant child? But since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my vow was a trouble for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, says Yahweh. Praise Yah. Set thee up waymarks, make thee high heaps. Set down hard toward the highway, even the way which thou wilt. Turn again, O virgin of Israel, turn again to these your city. Hmm. How long will you go about, O you backsliding daughter? For Yahweh have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Mm. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel. As yet they shall use this speech in the land of Yehuda and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. Yahweh bless thee, O habitation of justice, and mountain of holiness. Mm. And thou shalt dwell in Yehuda itself, and in all the cities thereof together, farmers, and they that go forth with flocks. For I have saturated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I awake and beheld, and my sleep was sweet unto me. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass 
that life as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, says Yahweh. In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Hmm. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, says Yahweh. And this covenant was sealed in the Messiah's blood. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know Yahweh. For they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Hmm. Thus says Yahweh, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves there are raw, Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says Yahweh, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says Yahweh. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that the city shall be built to Yahweh from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner. And the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill Gerab, and shall come past about to go at. And the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields unto the brook of Kidron unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east shall be holy unto Yahweh. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down anymore forever. Okay, my brother. Now let's go into our chapter. Uh, that was uh, chapter 32, right? 31. Okay, go into chapter 32 in verse 36 through 33 in verse 26. 32 and 36 through 33 and 26. Okay. Um, back in Jeremiah 31 verse 10. We know that Yahweh is just preaching about religion, right? Mm -hmm. And we say in verse 10, hear the word of Yahweh all you nations, <laughs> and declare it in the eyes of our hearts. But if a person is saying, I'm through who that God is, and when well, we gather this, mm -hmm. what other nation should be speaking about? You know, speaking up and say, God, you know. Um, all the other nations, <laughs> all the other nations upon the face of the earth, they just don't understand that our gathering is going to be. Is going to be the best time that they've ever enjoyed upon mm -hmm. But they don't want to become because of they're mad about their idols and that money. That's what it's all about. But they're mad about the power they got. 32 and verse 36. Yes, sir. And now, therefore, thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel concerning this city, well, you say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim, and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Now, he's talking about another third covenant now, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Make it with, made with who? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. Mm -hmm. The nation of Israel, they come back together, the two sticks were joined together, and they come back together, right? Set up a governmental system in the land, right? Go ahead, bro. Verse 41. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, 
and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. But thou sayest, Yahweh, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. And fields shall be bought in this land, whereof you say, it is desolate without man or beast. It is given into the hand of the called in. Now, you say fear is going to be buying this, buy, uh, bought in this land, right? Now, we know ain't no, ain't no fears in heaven, don't we? We know ain't nobody going to be up there plowing and growing all that marijuana and stuff, don't we? Don't we? Amen. Go on to read, brother. And also, if, if, if the Edomites, the so-called Israelis, are the true Jews, which they're not, they should be able to find that deed. Somebody should have found that deed with Jeremiah planting that land. They don't even know where it is, brother. Yeah. But guess what? You know. Go on to read, man. Verse. And I tell you something else, too. Them folks over there in Israel that came, that left over here and went over there and set up shop, they don't even know where it is. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse. Verse forty four. Man shall buy fields for money and subscribe evidences and sell them and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin and in the places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Yehuda and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valley and in the cities of the south. For I will cause their captivity to return, says Yahweh. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto Yahweh the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus says Yahweh, the maker thereof, Yahweh that formed it, to establish it. Yahweh is his name. And guess what? Guess who had him in the prison? The rulers. And they knew that he was a prophet of Lord, didn't they? Man, folks, do, Jake do not care who you are. Jake is going to treat you just the way he wants to treat you. You know why? No respect and no fear of the Creator. You know why? He see you every day. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And that's going to cause, that's going to cause him his biggest problems. He's going to become too what? Too common with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that old saying, you give Jake a thought that he'll go to his head, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, when I was growing up, we weren't even good patrolmen on the corner. We was the blue for each other day. Of course. Of course. Y'all see what happens in the house, don't you, when you get some nice and power and all that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me, bro. Mm -hmm. Read Zachary 9 and says, when it says, Boston, you should dwell in Ashdod. Let's start with Esau. Before you know, tell piece 15 miles from, from Ashdod, the, the patient, the now Ashdod, where they speak in Zachary 9. A bastard should dwell in Ashdod. I thought Ashdod was in Esau. I mean, in uh, Ashdod. Verse 4. Man, y'all ain't ready to fly. That's a shame. That's a shame. Folks being ready to be ready to fly. Yahoo chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knewest not. But thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, and concerning the houses of the kings of Yehuda, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword, they come to fight what the called is, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men, whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury, and for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from this city. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Yehuda and the captivity of Israel to return, and will build them as at the first. 
and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Thus says Yahweh, Again that shall be heard in this place, which you say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise Yahweh of hosts, for Yahweh is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of Yahweh, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, says Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, again in this place, which is desolate without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof shall be a habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the mountains, and in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Yehuda, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that counts them, says Yahweh. Mm. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Yehuda. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Yehuda be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name with which she shall be called Yahweh our righteousness. But thus says Yahweh, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priest the Levites want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of Yahweh came unto Yahweh, who said, Thus says Yahweh, If you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there shall not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he shall not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. Mm. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came to Yahweh, who said, Do you not consider what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which Yahweh have chosen, he have even cast them off? Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Mm. Thus says Yahweh, If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Esau, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Amen and amen. As we see, at the master's return, there are three levels of reward. Death to the wicked, natural life to those who, who, who uh, those called to replenish the kingdom with natural seeds, and those predetermined to live forever. Being the call and those chosen to participate in the regathering, very great and powerful blessings have been bestowed upon us in these uh, crucial times of the end. This is why, regardless of whether a soul is in sync with the message and the works in the body, or whether a soul kick against the pricks, there will always be a core group of saints who, uh, whose concerns are the works sanctioned by the body as they are sanctified to do those works. Even though there are some among us who are accusers, talkers, and persecutors uh, uh, who look for self-gratification in one form or another, the light of the master still illuminate uh, his works in the church as well as in our mortal bodies. Uh, uh, 
Uh, I got some scripture I'm gonna give y'all to read because I, I got I got a lot of stuff down here. Uh, uh, John 15 in verse one through uh, we're gonna read this. John 15 in verse one through verse 27. Well, you, start, you see that that's speaking. Steve, you know, it's going to be no spiritual. These Christians say some of spiritual Israel, right? They know spiritual. You see right here, it says the Peter Yaakov, right? As far as the prophecy. Right. They know spiritual. Like see, there was a whole there was a seed that was declared holy, but it was not a spiritual seed. Mm -hmm. John 15, in verse 1 through verse uh, 27, my brother. St. John chapter 15, in verse 1 through verse 27. Verse 1, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he takes away the father, right? And every branch that bear fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Fruit. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. <laughs> he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Hmm. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Here it is, is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciple. Praise God. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. That means put aside your little natural things that you're, going, that you're doing right, and do what? Lay down your life for your friends. Go ahead, bro. Verse 14. You are my friend. And I'm going to lay down my life for you, right? If you do whatsoever I command you. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Adonai doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Amen. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Praise God. That whatsoever you ask of Yahweh in my name, he may give it you. Amen. These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Adonai. If, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. 
But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this comes to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Hmm. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and you also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Amen and amen. See, this is why the saints are constantly troubled and suffer all things for the sake of the works of the Spirit in all saints. It's a process of purging us uh, through our faults, of which some are secret even to us. It's the Spirit guiding a soul through the process of repentance and scourging as we are fortified in spiritual power and made more fit for the Master's use through spiritual bonding. Because spiritual bonding creates peace through genuine love and is the force that drives our worship and service toward salvation. But the natural man never sees what the Spirit is doing among the saints. All he sees is what is done in the flesh. And that every conversation is negative towards someone else or their dislike concerning the works which still proper, prosper. Rather. Surely all were sin and, were, and some were pressed on towards perfection, giving Yahweh reason to save you, and that through striving with Yahweh, as the name Israel means, the Spirit might cause us to live up to our name, and Yahweh will give unto us the things uh, uh, promised. As it is written, you, Israel, you are the chosen set aside for the Master's use, even now and forever. As it is written, Israel, the worship and worship prove to the church that you are his chosen messengers because the works bring all those that are called to be saints. So seeing that the kingdom is within the minds and hearts and the works, surely you are living and building on the foundation of a tried stone laid in Zion and are very blessed, very blessed, to be partakers of the crowning cornerstone of the church which was laid in the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, of spiritual Israel, our Elohim, on the day of Pentecost. How else can we lay claim to being the sons and daughters of the living God? If you bear witness to these things, it's because your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So let us not <clears throat> be a slave to fleshly things. And when you fall down, don't remain in the pit. Because sin is, uh, is designed to show flesh to man just how imperfect and how weak we are without his love. But so was it with all of the saints that was before us. Let us hear the conclusion of this matter. Psalms chapter 68 and verse 13 through verse 35. Psalms chapter 68. In verse 13 through verse 35. Shudel. They come to get you, boy. Come to get you. Verse 13. Though you have lain among the pots, yet shall you be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Solomon. The hill of Elohim is as the hill of Bishon, a high hill as the hill of Bishon. Why leave you, you high hills? This is the hill which Elohim desired to dwell in. Yea, Yahweh will dwell in it forever. The chariots of Elohim are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Adonai is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captives. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that Yahweh Elohim might dwell among them. <coughs> Blessed be the Adonai who daily loadeth us with benefits, 
even the Elohim of our salvation. He that is our Elohim is the Elohim of salvation, and unto Elohim the Adonai belong the issues from death. But Elohim shall wound the head of his enemies, and the hairy scalp of such an one as goeth on still in his trespasses. The Adonai said, I will bring again from Bashan. I will bring my people again from the depths of the sea, that your foot may be dipped in the blood of your enemies and the tongue of your dogs in the same. They have seen thy goings, O Elohim, even the goings of my Elohim, my king, in the sanctuary. The singers went before, the players on instruments followed after, among them were the dancers playing with timbrels. Bless you, Elohim, and the congregations, even the Adonai, from the foundation of Israel. There is little Benjamin with their ruler, the princes of Yehuda and their council, the princes of Zebulun, and the princes of Nap Naphtali. Thy Elohim have commanded thy strength. Strengthen, O Elohim, that which you have wrought for us. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto thee. Rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people, till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver, scatter you, the people that delight in war. Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto Elohim. Sing unto Elohim, you kingdoms of the earth, all sing praises unto the Adonai, to him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, which were of old. Lo, he does send out his voice, and that a mighty voice. Ascribe you strength unto Elohim. His excellency is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O oh, Elohim, you are terrible out of your holy places. The Elohim of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be Yahweh. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>